Welcome everyone to another Six Patterns video. I'm Kevin. And I'm Max. Today we're going to be examining one of our 25 top... Top 25 pearls. pearls pulmonary pathology. In pulmonary pathology. Max is very strict about how the language it's, is used. It's great. Hey, hey when it. it's your baby, you know, yeah, you exactly. gotta, you you gotta make baby, sure it's, it's done yours. right. Yeah. Top 25 pearls in pulmonary pathology. And today we're going to be talking about a problematic area that all of us have encountered. Um, it's always an uncomfortable discussion because the fast thinking and the slow thinking are going to be part of this discussion. Today we have a 82-year-old woman with a strong smoking history who presents with a 5-centimeter lung mass. Needle core biopsies are done. So I would suspect this is not going to be a terribly central lung mass. Because the needle cord biopsy was done. Yeah, and they like to come at that from the outside of the chest. They don't like to go through the mediastinum there, to get to There's those big vessels. This is a hard it's a problem. It's, it's a problem. Not big for vessel everyone. that's moving. Yeah, she's in pumping blood. Exactly. So needle core biopsies were done, and they were sent to you. And here they are. Max, take it away. I love it. Needle core biopsies. You already know the clinical history. We've got a mass lesion. And, you know, you get this on your busy practice and you immediately recognize this is obviously abnormal. This is obviously not normal lung. And there's this huge proliferation. It's a blue biopsy, huge proliferation. You go to high power. We have these large zones of necrosis like this. We have hyperchromatic cells. They're all squished together. There's some molding against each other. Yeah, beautiful molding. And I'll tell you, I'm just in a busy practice. You're just ready to move on to the next case. So, I mean, Lymphoma. This, Lymphoma, well, it's a little cohesive, a little infiltrative yeah. for, for lymphoma. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, at high power, right? Hyperchromatic. Very cellular. Some and nuclear molding. And kind of dusty looking some nuclear. A little chromatin. bit of dusty looking chromatin pattern. So in a busy practice, you just sign this out as small cell carcinoma yeah. and move on. And you're thankful that it's not one of those glandular proliferations and you have to worry about adenocarcinoma. Oh my god. Of course we can put a link to our adenocarcinoma in situ discussion. Exactly. In the bottom here and uh, talk about another headache. Talk about another headache. Now the the topical bit to these to this particular case is what to do what to do or or no approach to important non adenocarcinoma thoracic all right so we're approaching the non adenocarcinoma tumors which is why you brought up that aren't you glad this isn't it's an not adenocarcinoma, adenocarcinoma in situ okay exactly good. excellent excellent so core biopsies bad looking tumor necrosis molding high grade blue cells high grade high grade small cell next case maybe some rosetting here i don't know yeah it could be Okay, so, but as we've talked about, right, this case got signed out, and then something happened, and then it ends up on the consultant's desk. Right. Why did this case, Kevin, end up on the consultant's desk? I think the problem here is that we use the fast thinking. Right. And we want to encourage the slow thinking when you're thinking of small cell. The deliberate. Deliberate slow thinking, meaning... Categorical slow criteria thinking. Criteria-based. Just promise us that in all future cases that you want to call small cell, you have applied strict criteria before making the diagnosis. And those criteria can include ancillary studies like immunohistochemistry. Exactly. So this case got sent to a consultant because, of course, when you make a diagnosis of small cell carcinoma, what happens immediately on the clinical side, the oncology side? They get anti-small cell carcinoma therapy, multi-agent chemo, multi-agent chemotherapy. And the expected response in that setting is to have a fairly impressive initial response. Right. If you're dealing with small cell carcinoma. So this patient received multi-agent chemotherapy and had zero response to the chemotherapy and in fact progressed Correct. fairly quickly over a period of months i think so the oncologist calls and says hey 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 are you sure about small cell because every other small cell that i've treated that wasn't erroneously diagnosed got an initial complete response or near complete response to chemo that's the problem with small cells that 
You get an, tell stories about you. You get an answer whether or not you were right or not within a few that. months. I hate that. It's terrible. So we get the uh, case as a consultant, and we this is a routine thing that we see, right? Like this comes in every so often, right. and we already know what the story is without knowing the history because most people don't send cases of small cell carcinoma that have responded to therapy, right? So we already have this idea that they probably haven't responded to therapy. So we go back and look at this case. We're looking at in the console practice. We're saying, let's apply the criteria. A small cell carcinoma should have all the things we already talked about. But in addition, what should we expect not to see in small cell? We should expect not to see nucleoli. Nucleoli. So if you can see nucleoli, it doesn't have to be in every cell, but if you can see them, and they're prominent in some places. Right. That's a no-no. That's against small cell. So just chalk that down. Yeah, it's a flare. It's saying yeah. maybe not small cell here. Hey, hey, hey. Think, it's saying. Think. The second thing, the tumor cells should not be engulfed by cytoplasm. So that the, the nucleus should not have a rim of cytoplasm around it. Yes, we're seeing molding, but mold, not all molding is the same. The small cell molding is nucleus to nucleus with barely any visible cytoplasm between the nuclei. And here, clearly there is cytoplasm. So automatically, I'm thinking, this thinks it's small cell, but I don't think it is. It's, yeah, it's, it's mimicking it's small pretending. cell. It's looking like small cell, but we have a generous amount of cytoplasm in Look quite a few that. of these cells. Wow. So prominent nucleoli, some generous amount of cytoplasm, what else morphologically? So you can have other tricky things that you can look for, like azoparty effect in necrosis. It's kind of a blue stringy nucleoplasm condensation, which is a distinctive finding. You can do immunohistochemistry here. Exactly. And the immunohistochemistry helps prove the cytoplasmic thing because these tumors are cytokeratin positive. Small cell is cytokeratin positive but scanty, meaning you look at low mag and you're actually thinking the cytokeratin is negative until you get to high mag, and then what do you see? It's this weak blush of a stain from low power. It's just a little sprinkling of brown, but high magnification, that perinuclear dot-like dot staining for pankeratin. That's the expected small cell pancytokeratin staining. So if you do a pankeratin stain on this and it's diffuse chocolate brown, that's another flag. And Not a small warning cell. says, maybe this isn't small don't cell. Don't go there. Yeah. So uh, the thing you don't want to do in this case is a synaptophysin. And, and you're supposed to that? say to me, what? But I thought that's what you did use to confirm the diagnosis no. of small cell No, carcinoma. unfortunately, too many other tumors will do synaptophysin, and they'll pull you into the wrong diagnosis. Well, and adenocarcinomas can have neuroendocrine differentiation. Absolutely. Squamous cell carcinomas can have neuroendocrine differentiation. It's not going to help you. And we see this every single day. I saw a case last week. It was called small cell because it had synaptophysin. It was clearly not small cell. Exactly. So be wary. If you've got a classic small cell carcinoma, you need to get a, a neuroendocrine marker to confirm the diagnosis according to the WHO. Right. But if you're not 100% sure it's small cell carcinoma, be very cautious in ordering those things. Now remember the WHO doesn't read the uh, the uh, literature showing that the perinuclear dot or Golgi dot as it's called of cytokeratin correlates 100% with the presence of neurosecretory granules. So it is the best neuroendocrine stain out the there. The perinuclear dot. The perinuclear dot with pancytokeratin. So I would argue you've already done your neuroendocrine marker. When you exactly. do your pancytokeratin. But if you if you feel the need, do it after the fact. Don't do it up front and have it bias your consideration of the case. Okay, how about other immunohistochemical stains? How about TTF1? Is that going to be stain. useful in this yeah, scenario? Yeah, 100%. 100% of small cells are TTF1 positive. Okay. 100%. 100%. Almost nothing in life is 100%. I know. That's one of the good things. That's why we mentioned in this video. Because if you, if you did a TTF and TTF is negative... You better stop really quick and do another stain. What stain would you do if the TTF were negative here? Well, I might think about squamous cell carcinoma. 
yeah, it doesn't look very squamous, but I would do a, a P40 or CK56. I mean, I think doing your standard limited battery CK7 TTF P40 is a pretty strong way to come at these cases. If you end up finding that it's TTF positive and it's cytokeratin 7 positive and it's P40 negative, you might want to get a pan keratin because the cytokeratin 7 may not show the dot as well as well as the pan, as the pan cytokeratin. cytokeratin or get a synaptophysin. Exactly. Another useful immunohistochemical stain when you're considering small cell carcinoma is the KI-67 or yeah. MIB-1, yeah. right? Yeah. This is probably the only time I ever ordered the KI-67 or MIB-1 is in this setting because really small cell carcinoma should have an exceedingly high proliferation rate. Almost every cell or at right. least eight out of every 10 cells should be right. positive for right. KI-67. And it's dramatic. I mean, it really is. It does look like 100%, even though if you do the analysis, it's probably less than that, but it's very high. So, I think we've covered it. Yeah, but what, what did, what's, what, what's our pearl? What did this case turn out to be, though? Oh, I guess we've got to tell you that. So, the stains were done, Stain. and this turns out this is TTF negative. TTF negative. P40 positive. P40 positive. CK56 positive. And strong keratin reactivity yeah. with a MIB-1 of about 50%. So even though this looks for all the world in some areas like small cell carcinoma with these almost rosettes, -like, and we've got pseudo molding, pseudo -molding nucleoli, but yeah. we've got nucleoli and we've yeah. got an immunohistochemical panel that's entirely inconsistent right. with small, small cell. cell carcinoma. So the pearl in this case really is that you should use very strict criteria, including immunohistochemical criteria to diagnose small cell carcinoma because the answer as to whether or not you were right or not is going to declare itself within a few months. Yeah, it's like the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. The proof of the small cell is in the response to chemotherapy. Exactly. So, I think that does it for this pearl. What, uh, what should they do next? Uh, don't forget to like and comment below. You can also hit the subscribe button if you're interested in... Welcome to the club. ...subscribing. And I uh, awesome. hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.